my name is Rachel and I'm here today to do a graphic novels recommendation video for people who don't like comics and graphic novels. So that might sound a little bit stupid, however the reason that I'm making this video is because I don't like comics and like really fast moving Marvel, DC, mm -mm. don't like it, tried it, do not like it at all. However, I am a huge lover of graphic novels. I started reading graphic novels two or three years ago and it has taken me until now to know exactly what I like and be able to go and find it in a shop. I can usually hone down exactly what I'm looking for and exactly what I will like specifically. With that skill that I have acquired, I thought today I would share with you some fantastic graphic novels that I really enjoy from someone who doesn't enjoy comics. The first few graphic novels I'm gonna recommend are quite popular. However, I'm going to recommend them anyway because I feel like there's a lot of hype around them so it's hard to know if they're actually worth your time and they 100% are. So I'm going to talk about those ones first but probably just not in as much detail. So the most popular person I think who gets recommended for like graphic novel recommendations on booktube and things like that is probably Brian Lee O'Malley and obviously he is the writer of Scott Pilgrim. Now I do really enjoy the Scott Pilgrim series but it's one that I really have to be in the mood for so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one. However, he does have some absolutely fantastic books. So the first one that you've probably heard recommended is Seconds. Seconds is about a girl who works in a restaurant and she starts being able to time travel and it goes from there. It is a standalone, it's quite long, but it is absolutely fantastic. The illustrations are wonderful and it is great. But the thing that I really wanted to recommend by Brian Lee O'Malley is his Snot Girl series because this is the only comic -y type of thing that I found that I actually like. So these are Bind Ups Volume 1 and Volume 2 of the Snot Girl comic, Done My Image, and I absolutely love them. They're not like other comics, like the fast paced and all that stuff. We've got slow stories, got a lot of character development. You get to know the main character in so much detail. And so, yeah, I would really, really recommend these. And they're the only comic that I actually properly enjoy, to be honest. I know Brian Lee O'Malley is recommended a lot, but there is a reason that he's recommended a lot and his graphic novels are absolutely fantastic. So you should check them out. The next book that I always hear recommended for like beginners with graphic novels and all stuff like that is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, which I would agree, this is a great place to start. This is one of the first graphic novels I read and I did absolutely love it. It's really great. The illustrations are amazing. However, a book that I don't hear talked about as much is Baba Yaga's Assistant, which is illustrated by Emily Carroll and written by Marika Makula. And this is amazing. So this is based on the fairy tale of Baba Yaga and a teenager who goes to work for her in the forest. And it is just such a sweet story. Again, we have very different illustrations to the ones in Through the Woods, but they are also very, very beautiful. And I absolutely love this one. So although I hear Through the Woods recommended a lot, I would also say like pick up Baby Yaga's assistant because I kind of think it's better. And the last two graphic novels I have to recommend that everyone recommends but I can't not recommend them are Isabel Greenberg graphic novels. These are part of the earlier series and um, this is the Encyclopedia of Earth, and this one is the 100 Nights of Hero. I like this one better but that's probably because it's got lesbians and I like those. The illustrations are phenomenal, the story's wonderful, it's got a fairy tale feel to it and she is just an absolutely wonderful illustrator. I love her so much. And I think Isabel Greenberg is doing a book about the Bronte sisters at the minute. So I am so, so excited for that. So then I have a few books that I don't hear recommended as much, but that I really enjoy. So one of those is Relish, My Life in the Kitchen by Lucy Nisley. So this is a non-fiction graphic novel and in it, she will go through events in her life, but they are always events that kind of revolve around food and then at the end of each chapter she will have a little illustrated recipe page so this one is for the way her mum makes mushrooms it's one of those books where you kind of just like sit and languish in it and just yeah it's nice it's very sweet and so I would definitely recommend this one I'm quite a fan of non-fiction graphic novels so yeah this is a great one. The next book is This One Summer by Gillian and Mariko Tamaki. This is an absolutely fantastic graphic novel. It is very simply illustrated and easy to follow in terms of where the writing is and things like that. And we basically follow a girl who goes to a summer house for the summer, meets her friend who she always spends the summer with. 
and her mum is going through some mental health problems but she doesn't really understand that she's going through mental health problems because she's a child and she can't really understand that yet. We understand because we read it and we can see that that's what the issue is but she doesn't and so it's a really nuanced look at like family life and mental illness and things like that. I absolutely adored this book so would highly recommend. Then I have some funny graphic novels. So the first one is The Gigantic Bird That Was Evil by Stephen Collins. This book is so funny. This is about a guy who lives in a world where everything is conventional. Everyone like lives exactly the way they're supposed to live, the way they're told to live. Everyone dresses well, is clean shaven, um, all that sort of stuff. There's no alternative, there's no, there's nothing like that. And one day this man wakes up and his beard just starts growing and he can't stop it growing. And that's the premise of this book. I cannot look at this book without thinking of eternal flame. <laughs> because it's just so funny. The art style is very simple in here but absolutely wonderful. The next book is Woman World by Aminda Dhaliwal. I haven't really seen anyone talk about this because this is one of those books where I went into like an indie comic book shop and just found it. So I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it but they really should because it is so funny. So this is about a world where men have died out and gone extinct. It discusses why men went extinct uh, at the start and we are basically following this society of women after the extinction of man. So we have how they choose to lead, the way that they have relationships, we have a little girl who is trying to understand what men were like because she's never met a man, she's never seen a man. The art style is ridiculously simple but it definitely works and what I loved about this book is we have young characters, we have old characters, we have trans characters, we have lots of different women. As you can see represented on the front as well, we've got alternative women, we've got women who like to be naked, we have women from different cultures, we have a woman here who's had a mastectomy, we've got an old woman here, a woman with a prosthetic limb, like there's a lot of different people represented in this book and it's just funny, it's so so funny. And then the last person I'm going to recommend is someone that I keep talking about but I just love her so much and it is Vera Brosgall. So this is Anya's Ghost and this is Be Prepared. I would recommend Be Prepared more because I'm just in love with it at the moment because I only just read it but Anya's Ghost is also phenomenal. So Anya's Ghost follows a little girl who falls down a well and she finds a ghost of a girl at the bottom of the well and starts talking to her and then when she gets rescued from the well the girl comes out of the well with her and kind of helps her with her life, that sort of a thing. This is a very easy to read graphic novel, the illustrations are fantastic, all it has is like a blue wash underneath it and I just loved it, it's so so cute. However, like I said, I like this one more. This is about a little Russian girl who decides to go to a Russian camp for the summer, she's really really excited about going and then she ends up being one of the youngest girls in her group and so she doesn't really make friends very easily and it's all about her summer at the summer camp. It is adorable, it is so cute. The illustrations again are very simple and this time they have like a green wash underneath because it's like a summer in the forest so it suits the story and I just love this. I already want to reread it and I've literally just read it. It is so cute and I would highly recommend it. I'm definitely going to be like buying every book Brosgall ever brings out because I'm loving Vera Brosgall at the minute. <laughs> oh my god these are so heavy. These are the graphic novels that I would recommend if you are not really a comic book fan. Like I said they're all slower character driven kind of graphic novels which is what I like to read and there are definitely like a lot of books out there that you can find that are like that. It's just a case of really doing your research first because plot driven graphic novels are just not for me. If you've read any of these let me know what you thought down below or if you have any recommendations for me of books that are like this also let me know because I'm always on the lookout for more. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!